One of the cool things about being in this sport at the level I'm at is I get to do a lot of displays, school displays, Boy Scouts, trade shows, things like that. And so, you know, I take the robot, I take some various props and pieces with me to show off, but frequently I get asked basically how to wire up a robot, how to wire up a speed controller, how to actually get a robot to work. And so at a recent uh, elementary school show, I had the opportunity to do some of that. So I made this little, uh, little basic board on how you uh, wire up a speed controller, how you wire up the basics of a robot. So uh, let's, uh, let's kind of go over some of the basics and so you can see how you do this. So here is the basic layout of some of the things you wire up in a combat robot. All right, so everything always starts out with a power source. So here's a, here's a battery laid out here. Um, this particular battery has this style of connector. So this is uh, the XT90. Um, you got to make sure that you have the wiring in your robot that matches whatever comes with your battery. It's a lot easier to change the wiring in your robot than it is to change the wiring on the battery itself. So um, get used to soldering connectors because you're going to be doing that a lot in, uh, in a combat robot. So in this particular case, power comes over. I've got a couple of power switches here because we've got a couple of separate power systems we're going to show off. Right here is just a negative block, so the negative that comes out of the battery goes to here and all of the, the, the grounds, the negatives, come back to here. So we're using the power switches to mechanically cut the uh, the power coming from the battery. Um, this is important because to be legal safety wise it has to be a mechanical break of power not a software or an electronic one. Um, there's a lot of different types of controllers that will allow you to turn the robot off via a toggle that kills the electronic control to the speed controller and that's not legal for combat so you need to have a large switch that you break the main power from these particular ones i get from uh, wayachi uh they're the standard for pretty much all combat robots they're, they can handle a lot of current they don't take up much space so they're a, a really good valid choice uh next legal requirement you have to have on a combat robot is you have to have uh an, an led indicator to show that the, power, the robot is in fact powered up. So when you turn on main power, your LED should light up to let it know that it's live. And that also is a good indication when you turn power off that you have turned power off. So this is a, this is a safety feature that all robots have to have. In this particular case, there's a couple of different types of motors that get used in combat robots. There's one that are run by brushes, and there's ones that are brushless. So this is two different systems to kind of show the basics of how those two systems work. So the other pieces that are involved, you have the speed controllers that provide power to the motors. You have a radio receiver that takes input from my radio to tell the speed controllers what to do and then the various wires to connect everything up. So let's start out with a, the simpler version, the brushed side of this. Okay. So if we were to turn on main power, use a Wayachi switch, power it up, LED indicator lets me know that I have power. If you notice, there's no light right now on the receiver because it's not receiving anything. We turn on the transmitter, as soon as the transmitter binds with the receiver, you see a little light come on in there. So now I know that the radio is connected to the transmitter. Now, typically this is buried inside your robot and you don't see this. But for your immediate build of it, you want to make sure all of this is working. This is important. It's a good indicator that something's going on. Okay. All right. So 
this particular speed controller through these small lines will provide the power that powers the receiver. So the main power goes to here. This one has a voltage breakdown that breaks it down to the, the 5 volts needed for the receiver. Some older brushed controllers don't have a built-in battery eliminator circuit. And on those ones, you'll have to add its own battery eliminator circuit to provide the right power because this is a six cell battery so it's you know 24 volts and the receiver wants five so if you try to do that up you'll burn up the receiver so this has to be powered from a lower voltage in this case it's provided by the speed controller all right so here's the here's the pwm wire that takes a signal from the receiver goes to the speed controller tells the speed controller what to do and if i move I think we're on channel two here. So it takes the input from the transmitter, tells the speed controller what to do, which provides current to the motor. There isn't a lot of programming or thought process in this. So, you know, I go up a certain percentage here, it gives a certain percentage of current through here. It's pretty straightforward, okay? And this speed controller really doesn't care what's connected to it. So like if I had this connected to a light and I pushed it up, I could just control how much power went into the light. It, do it doesn't care what's connected to it. Likewise, all it's doing is throwing voltage and current down these, down these wires. So if you look at, you know, it's spinning in one direction when I pull forward, it spins in the other direction when I go backwards. This is what you want. But it does... Positive and negative don't really mean anything on the output side of this. So if I swap these around, this still works just fine. The only difference now is it's spinning in the reverse of what it was before. It's the only difference. So this is part of when you're setting up your, your machine and you're trying to do this, and if it's going in the wrong direction, you can just flip the wires around and suddenly it's going in the right direction. So this is all fairly simple, fairly basic. And for years, this was how pretty much all combat robots and even small RC toys were designed. So there's the simple side of this. So let's turn uh, that guy off. We'll talk about the brushless side. A lot of this is still very simple. You've, you've got the main power switch provides power to the speed controller. This one has an extra set of wires come out, which is fairly common on newer controllers like this. In this particular case, this is for an on-off switch because this would be used in a scooter and you would have a little toggle on the handle to turn it on and off. That's not legal for a combat machine. You have to have a big mechanical one that cuts main power, not an electronic one that cuts control. So in my case, and in any combat robot that I've used these in, this is just not used for anything. It's just tied up like this. Still has the same PWM cable that goes off to, we're going to use the same receiver here. Still has the same two input wires like the brushed side does, but on the output it's got three wires. Okay. In a brushless motor, there are three wires because it's trying to figure out what the, the relationship of the armature to the magnets that are in there, and it needs all three wires to alternate where it goes through. In this case here, we have a mechanical connection. Those go to brushes that actually touch the, the armature. In this particular case, there's no mechanical connection, so it's just got to figure out where everything is, and so there's a little more programming involved in this side. But very similar to the other ones, you power the guy up, LED powers up, everything's connected, all of that. We've still got the transmitter on, you can see that the receiver's happy, and away we go, all right? So everything on this system works as it's supposed to. Very similar to how the brush system, if you flop wires, it'll change direction. For a brushless motor, if you swap any two of these around, it will also change direction. So any two you swap, it would do that. 
The problem is then you have to reprogram your speed controller because it needs to figure out where everything is in relation to uh, um, between the armature and the magnets that are in there so that it can work correctly. If you notice this one here, the only input it's got is just the PWM cable coming from the transmitter, whereas this one's got the on-off switch we talked about, its main PWM to, turn, to tell it what to do, but there's also connections all over on the outside. This is where you would connect to program it. This is where you would connect to get telemetry. There's a lot of different things you can get off of a modern controller. They do a lot of interesting things. Um, so this is the basic layout of how you wire up both a brushed and a brushless setup. Straightforward, power comes in, You've got the main switches, this is where you break your power that goes to these. There's always just positive and negative going into the controllers. What's coming out depends on the type of controller and the type of the motor. Um, and that's the, that's the basics of how you make a, a speed controller work and a combat robot work. So there you have some of the basics of how you wire up a speed controller and how you wire up a combat robot. Um, next week, I think we're going to do a, a bit on programming the speed controller so you can kind of get some of the basics there. And then down the road, we're going to do some things on the basics of battery layout, battery choices, how you wire up specifically the batteries that you need. So we've got, we've got some more of the, just the basics of building a combat robot coming. So, uh, you know, stay tuned. We've got some interesting things down the road.